The discovery by Copernicus that the Earth rotated round the Sun radically altered humankind's perception of the universe. Other astronomers supported him. Galileo found himself arraigned before the Inquisition for such heresy. He later recanted, but the seeds of doubt had been sown. Some philosophers, too, began to reject the established geocentric doctrine. In Italy, Giordano Bruno fell foul of the Inquisition for publishing his dialogues on cause, principles and unity. Unlike Galileo, he refused to recant. He was burnt at the stake in 1600. But science and religious philosophy were drawing closer together. No arts, no letters, no society. And which is worst of all, continual fear and danger of violent death. And the life of man, solitary, poor, nasty, brutish and short. In 1640, Thomas Hobbes had fled to France. There, for a time, he became tutor to the future Charles II. Hobbes' ideal ruler was, like the Stuarts, an absolute monarch, whose function was to keep the peace and preserve order. Two years later, King Charles I and his parliament went to war. This conflict was to shape Hobbes' political thinking, and in 1651, he penned his greatest work, Leviathan. The experience of the English Civil War, and also the study of Thucydides' history of the Peloponnesian War, which Hobbes translated, uh, shaped Hobbes thinking about politics to the extent that it brought home to him in a way that few political thinkers really have it in the forefront of their minds, that the stakes in political thinking and political practice are very high. And if things go politically very wrong, then the consequences are like extreme misery for virtually everybody. There were other influences. Hobbes' idea of a social contract between the ruler and the citizen owes much to Machiavelli, Richard Hooker and Hugo Grotius. Hobbes followed Grotius' idea that there was a natural law which was based on man's nature as a social animal. Hobbes was also fascinated by why men go to war and what inclines them to peace. Every man has the right to use his own power. Liberty is the absence of obstacles to achieving this. But in times of emergency, the citizen should relinquish his rights to the ruler in the national interest. So political obligation rests upon a moral obligation. Hobbes later added a further obligation upon all citizens. A simple obedience in all things wherein their obedience is not repugnant to the laws of God.